Hello everyone, welcome to the 200 Q&A practice. We're going to start out today with the defense questioning. Okay, and I will read this at 200, ready? How long were you employed by Southern California Edison? It was almost two years the day of the accident. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Are you ambidextrous at all? No. Have you ever filed any lawsuits for personal injuries? No. Have you ever made a workman's compensation claim as a result of injuries sustained in your occupation? I don't know how to answer that. I don't know. All right. Have you ever been injured on the job? Yes. All right. Where was that? Warner Telephone Company. And which office was that? It was in Hollywood. About how long ago was that? I was 18. Pardon me? 18. When you were 18? Uh-huh, yes. What was the nature of your duties with Warner Telephone? I was a telephone operator. And how were you injured on the job? I fell. And what parts of your body were injured in the accident? I just received bruises on the, it must have been on the left side, I believe. Did that require any medical treatment? No, just getting over all the soreness. You don't at this time know whether any kind of formal claim was made for compensation? My parents handled it, no. Any other on-the-job injuries since that time? No. Have you ever been involved in any other automobile accidents? When I was also 18. Were you injured in that accident? Yes. What injuries did you sustain there? I just had a sore back. Lower back or upper back? Just the whole back area was sore. Were you the operator of one of the vehicles? Yes, I was. Where did that vehicle, where did the accident occur? Hollywood and Pine. What type of accident was it? Rear end, intersection? I was sitting at a stop sign and a Cadillac came around a bus that was parked and hit me. From the rear? Yes. As a result of that accident, was it necessary that you seek medical assistance? I went to a medical doctor and he had a masseuse come and massage my back for a while. Did you recover completely from those injuries in a short period of time? Yes. Did you have any residual complaints from that accident at the time of this accident? No. Any other automobile accidents? No. Any other accidents of any kind in which you have ever sustained any kind of an injury? No. Are you presently receiving any kind of disability payments? Not anymore. Did you receive state disability for a while following this? No, there was a mix up in the paperwork. I received Southern California Edison disability. Have you made any application since the 2012 accident for Social Security disability benefits? Yes. All right, and did they have you examined by a doctor? No. Is that claim pending or granted or denied? Denied. What was the basis of their denial, do you know? No, not really. Have you ever served in the military? No. Excluding the accident that we are concerned with today, have you ever been hospitalized at all in the past five years for any illness or whatever? No. Do you have a personal or family physician? A peer? Yes, in other words, a doctor that you would go to. Yes, yes, Dr. Smith. Is Dr. Smith's first name? Eldon. Is he in Yucca Valley? Yes. Medical doctor? Yes. Is he a general practitioner? Yes. How long has he been your personal physician, roughly? About two years, maybe. Has Dr. Smith entered any treatment for injuries received in the May 2012 accident? Was it May? May. November. That's what threw me. No, he was not. I never went to him for the accident that I had. I had a physician for that. Have you ever sustained any prior injury of any kind to your right arm or shoulder? No. Have you ever had any prior problems with your right hand, wrist, elbow, arm, shoulder? No. How would you describe the condition of your health immediately before the accident in 2012? Good. Just briefly describe for me the injuries that you sustained in the accident. I received a laceration to the forehead. I had a swollen knee, fractured tailbone, and a shattered shoulder, right shoulder. I am sorry, did you say the tailbone was fractured? Yes. Where was your forehead lacerated? Can you point it out? Up here somewhere. You are indicating an area in the upper center of your forehead just below the hairline? Yes. Is there any residual scar there at all? No. Did that require any sutures? No. Did you lose consciousness at the accident scene? I believe so, yes. Are you having any present difficulties which you would in any way relate to the scar on your forehead? I am thinking about things such as perhaps headaches, dizziness, blurred vision, anything of that sort. I don't, I don't know. I had an awful lot of headaches. I have had an awful lot of headaches since the accident, but I think that is from the shoulder. Do the headaches seem to originate in the forward part of your area behind the forehead? They end up right here. It is not there. When you say here, you are indicating the left side of the, the forehead. 
Was there any injury to your head other than the laceration of your forehead that you are aware of? Not that I was aware of, no. Have you become aware of any since that time other than the headaches? No. Which knee was injured? Well, I think it was, I don't really remember. Okay, I'm going to switch transcripts. Okay. All right. This is going to plaintiff. Here we go. After you made those statements to Mr. Heron, did you ask whether or not he understood what you explained to him? Yes, sir, I did. What did he respond? He stated, yes, sir. Did you ask him anything after that? Yes, sir, I asked him with these rights in mind if he was willing to talk about the case. What did he say? Yes, sir. Did you make any threats to him at this time? Objection calls for a conclusion. No, sir. Overruled. Did you suggest to him that things may go better for him if he were to make certain statements to you? No, sir. What did you discuss with Mr. Heron? I advised Mr. Heron that he had been arrested on suspicion of armed robbery. I explained to him that when I spoke with him, when I spoke to him about robbery, I was speaking about the robbery of a stop-and-go market at 1827 West La Palma in Anaheim earlier that evening. What else did you talk about? Your Honor, I would ask that all Officer Girk's testimony be taken subject to motion to strike. I'd like to research that motion. All right, so understood. What else did you discuss with Mr. Heron at that time? During the course of the interview, Mr. Heron stated he, Stephen and Billy, Witten, had been to the beach area in Mr. Heron's vehicle. En route back to the Anaheim area from the beach, they had discussed pulling a robbery. He at this time stated that he had brought up the idea of the robbery, at which time Stephen Witten stated it would be easy and he knew a market they could do. They at this time drove to the stop and go market and had parked on the east side of the market. They had gotten out of the vehicle and there were customers in the store at this time. They did not want to pull a robbery with customers in the store, so it was decided that Joseph Heron would go into the market and buy a bottle of wine. Mr. Heron stated while he was in the market purchasing this wine, Billy and Stephen came running into the market, at which time Stephen had the rifle. Stephen pointed the rifle at the clerk and asked for the money. Billy, at this time, had gone behind the counter and started taking the money from the register. Joseph Heron, at this time, stated he started to leave the market, at which time he observed the police vehicle. Just as he got to the doorway, Stephen and Billy came running out of the market, and that he and Billy had run north on Onagonda and left the area. Did he indicate what part he was to play in this armed robbery? Yes, sir, he stated that he was going into the market to make a purchase of a bottle of wine. They were waiting for customers to leave. Was there any purpose in purchasing the bottle of wine? Yes, they wanted to find out how much money was in the cash register. The individual we are talking about is the man seated at the front of the council table. Yes, sir. May we reflect that he is the defendant in this case, Your Honor? Yes, the record will so indicate. Thank you. I have no further questions. Cross-examination? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, we have just a few more minutes. Switch transcripts one more time. Here we go. And you are living at home now with your mother? No, sir. What? No, sir. You are not living with your mother? No. I better stop right there. No further questions. Any questions? No questions, Your Honor. All right, you may stand down. Thank you. Your Honor, I understand Dr. Klatt will be here in about 10 minutes. We will take a recess then until the arrival of Dr. Klatt. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember the admonition which the court has previously given to you. Let the record indicate defendant and both counsel are present. All jurors are present in the jury box and the alternate juror is present. You may call your next witness. We would like to call Dr. Klatt. Dr. Klatt, you recall testifying in this proceeding last week, is that true? Yes. I wonder if you also recall testifying that you examined Mr. Johnson? Do I recall testifying that I did examine him? Yes. Yes, I did. I wonder if you could describe to the court and the jury the steps that you took during your examination of Mr. Johnson. Well, prior to the examination, I read a great deal of material that was from the police records regarding the case and the incident, 
which included statements made by Mr. Johnson shortly after his arrest and statements made by the witnesses. It did not include a statement from his wife or an indication of his blood alcohol level. Other than that, the material seemed to be complete. I then saw him in an interview. I don't believe I recorded the length of time of the interview, probably between one and a half and two and a half hours, during which time I discussed in detail the incidents, the things that had preceded this shooting, and in addition took background history on him to get to know his background, his lifestyle, and different types of problems he had had. And from all the material that I gathered, I attempted to evaluate his personality structure and, in as far as I could, his condition at the time that the incident occurred, and I submitted this in writing, then with my conclusions. Taking a history from Mr. Johnson, is that an essential part of the psychiatric examination? Yes, it is. Is it essential with regard to his prior acts or with regard to the recollection that he may have had of the incident that you are examining with regard to... I think it's necessary to make any kind of overall evaluation, either of his prior acts or to some extent of his condition, at the time that the incident occurred, to get past behavior patterns, etc. Now, at the time of your examination, were you aware of the statements Mr. Johnson made, such as, I'm sorry I shot the police officers? I didn't make note of that. If that was included in the police material, then I'm sure that I read it. I don't really recall. Certainly, I believe that he made reference to that when I talked with him. But as far as knowing that he said it right after the incident, I don't recall at this point. If I were to say to you that Mr. Johnson made a statement such as, the way all the officers were walking around, I could have shot them with a twenty-two. Do you recall that statement being made or do you recall reading it someplace? I believe that I read that. Now, Doctor, you were aware of the sequence of events that took place on this evening of December 6, 2012, are you not? Yes. Without telling us what your opinion is as a result of your examination and investigation, with regard to Mr. Johnson and his state of mind on this evening, were you able to formulate any opinion as to Mr. Johnson's mental condition? Yes. Okay, that concludes our Q&A practice for the 200 class. Have a great day.